All right, you are here again with Mike at Workflow. If you need to contact us, look in the description below and you will find our contact information. Our general contractor license number is 79878, North Carolina. Um, where we're at now, we have painted the cabinets and installed all the doors and drawers and we cleaned everything while we had it all apart. Um, I've already took the liberty of working while you guys weren't here. So I've removed the countertops everywhere else but here, what we're going to have to do for the video. Um, and we're going to be removing the backsplash. And the first, first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this trim. We're going to show you how to remove trim without messing up your drywall. Um, let's go ahead and remove the trim for right now. So. All right, need you a nice new utility knife. You need your safety gear, safety glasses, gloves. All right, cut the end. Your trim's here. You got your trim. And you got your door jam. You to put your door door in. Door jam flush with the sheetrock, and then you come on after that, and you, and you nail your trim onto it. So what you're gonna do, and then you caulk it in the pan. So you got to cut this caulk line. So you cut in between here. Between the jam and the, and the trim, and then this is the most important part. You cut this back. You cut this back section here on the dry where drywall is caulked. The trim's caulked to the drywall. This is the most important part here. If you don't if you don't properly cut this caulk line on the back side, when you pull the trim off, it's going to rip your drywall paper and you're going to have to repair it. And that's not a question that will happen. It's not if that happens, it will happen if you don't cut this caulk line on the back side. Let's hook on. Rip it off here. And the reason why I'm removing this trim is because it's actually notched out for it's notched out around the old countertop. So we're gonna have to uh, replace this trim piece here. You gotta buy you one of these little bars here. They come in all, all different brands or whatever. This is one I got off Amazon. It's called by Tecton. And then you, you want to come in between here and the door jam, right where you cut the caulk line here. All right? Now, let's do the back side first because that's the most important. Oh, oops. Oh, my God. break your sheetrock. Down here I can I can pry on it here because this is going to get backsplash here. Alright let's do that. Pry it outward like that and not don't pry like this because you'll just bush your sheetrock. Alright let's go down this front face here. That's what I should have done in the first place. Should peel off and just work your way back. Mm. A little bit of paint from the cabinet. Let me cut it and make sure it doesn't peel that paint off my cabinet. That'll be a disaster. Oops.
if you pry like this on this back side towards you, then you'll dig into the sheetrock here, which will be covered up when you put your trim piece back on. And you see why we had to replace it? Because when we put the new one on here, this, this would have to be repaired, so we have to replace this. Alright, now that we have that off, next thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and remove the countertop. So, side note, let me tell you. So, I, I, I finished, I wanted to leave the countertops on while I was working on the cabinet, so I have a, a place to sit thing, set things. Um, what I wish I would have done is I wish I would have removed the backsplash before I started sanding and prepping and painting the cabinets. Because this is a, has been a dirty job, and, I've got, and, and we've got to the method we're going to use is putting compound on this to repair it because when you pull this off, this adhesive that they use to put on these, these uh, backsplash tiles, it's some tough stuff. Okay, so when you pull that off, it's going to pull sheetrock pieces, paper, it's going to be bad. So either you replace the drywall or, you, or I'm going to show you an easier method on how to do it. Um, or you could go along and replace this drywall, but let me tell you, that is a lot of work to replace that drywall underneath these cabinets. For one, the whole time you're working, you're going to be working bent like, like this, and it's going to be killer on your back. I've done a job, I did a big job where a homeowner had removed this backsplash themselves. Tile guy came in and said, man, I can't put tile on that, it looks too bad. And so uh, he hired me to come in and fix the drywall. It took me about six hours to replace the drywall in this little section here. The problem to come in with is all these outlets. You got to do, you got to cut all that stuff out level. You got to remove all that sheetrock off. You got to remove all the nails out of it. Then you got to pull, then you might have to pull the outlets out. Um, the, these You got to pull these, all these outlets out so you can put the drywall on it. Um, then you had to cut, then you had to cut that perfect to get it out. Then you got to reinstall the dry, cut the drywall, and you got to cut all of these outlets out on each piece. It is a lot of work. I'm going to show you the easier way to do it. Um, so, unless you like really destroy your sheetrock and there's really nothing you can do but replace it, then then do that. But I highly recommend you just patch it if you can. Um, it doesn't have to support if, if it's got any structure to it at all. It'll be fine as long as it's flat because it's not supporting a lot of weight. Okay, it's it's a vertical and it's it's stacked tiles, so it's not going to be supporting a ton of weight. It doesn't have to be. The, the weight's not resting on the drywall, right? The weight's resting on top of each other, and it's just adhered to the wall. Um, and it's going to be sitting on the countertop, so the countertop's really holding all the weight. But um, anyway, so. We're not going to remove the countertop just yet. I want to go ahead and remove that backsplash because I want all of this crap that comes off of this backsplash to fall right here, so I can so I can get rid so I can scoop it up easy. And what you're going to need for this, I have a rubber mat. You can use a, a metal hammer. Uh, you need this thing here. So when it comes to the type of tile, you want to weaken the tile first. If you can get behind that glue or whatever and, and, and break that bond, go for it. But it's really hard once it's grouted, one, one like this, once it's grouted and all that stuff, it is, it is one solid piece and it comes off with, with a lot of resistance. Has a lot of resistance, okay? So what you can do, like any, anything, anytime you have something like this that's solid, that's glued onto something, um, you want to weaken it first. So if it's a glued down, glued down flooring or something like that, and it's a thick board, trying to get that thing up like it is is going to be a lot of work. It's going to be hard to do. But if you chip away, break that board in half where there's just there, there's not much structure left, then it's a lot easier to get get it scraped up. Um, but here I'm going to show you how to do this. If you got one of those uh, hammer tools. Or it's got the, the hammer chisel or whatever you might want to try one of those it might work a lot better but I don't have one right now and I'm not buying one either so not right now unless there's a good good need for it but I can just do this with hammering with this was hammering on and claw so what I'm gonna do this tile here is not like 
brick, not like ceramic tile. This is like a, it's flakes. It's like a flaky tile. Like even when I was cutting it, it was flaky. Um, never mind the install job. This was like a, whenever I was practicing doing backsplash installs. I've done a lot of them since then, and they turn out really nice, and customers love them. Um, this was like the first one I ever did, and honestly, it looks like ass. So I never got around to finish. I didn't have the right tools. I didn't have a wet saw to cut this thing with, so I was cutting it with a dry saw. And when I was trying to cut these pieces, they were flaking and falling apart because my saw was dry. Um, so I didn't even bother doing all that work. So I just said, whatever. And so, um, but we're going to do, we're going to install this backsplash proper this time. Because, well, I know how to do it now. But here we go. Let's start. So that flaked right off. You can still see that the bond is still, there's still a piece of this tile there. Right? So that's where it's, the back of it is glued. Okay, work your way down. See that netting right there? That's what you want to get to, is that netting if you can. See how it's flaking off? It was doing that when I was cutting it too. See my corner bead right there. I'm starting to see my corner bead. Oops. So what we're gonna do? What we're trying to weaken. This is what you want. Once you get that netting to come off, the whole thing will come off. See? Once you get behind it, that netting. Grout is what gives it a lot of power. Once, it, once it's, it's routed, it's a tough customer. You can see it's pulling off the paint and drywall and everything there. It's going to be bad when you pull it off there. It's going to be bad. Um, what you hope is you don't see uh, sheetrock failures. Unfortunately, with this house, they didn't nail, a lot of these boxes are cut in boxes where they're not nailed to a stud. So whenever I had a drywall failure around that, then I got to remount. Then you got to remount the, uh, the outlet box. So you end up having to cut it out. If you can't fix that, you're gonna have to cut it out and remount it. I think one of them over there was kind of compromised a lot, but I was able to uh, not have to do it because it was some parts of it was still connected.
turn it off. Huge chunks. I don't know. I don't remember what kind of glue I used for this, but it's some tough stuff. Let me tell you. Oh, I need a scraper. Oh, it's in my back pocket. I want to try to get up under this right where that net is at. Right there you see. When you get on that net, you're already succeeding in life. The reason why I'm using a rubber mallet is because this this uh, scraper it has a isn't hard. It's not a metal. It's not like a chisel. It's Beat the crap out of it with a metal hammer. There it is. See? Pay attention to how I'm doing this now. I hit it with the with the big with the big chisel first to knock a bunch of with the big claw and knock a bunch of the main structure of it off. If you try to go in here with this spat with this spatula and try to separate that beam, it ends up just Digging into the drywall because it's so, this is so tough that you just can't. It's just not going to happen. It's going to have to go into the drywall before it separates that. Just paint them. This is why I recommend you do this before you paint your cabinets. Live and you learn. I right, see so now that we've gotten the main part, main part of it off here. Oops. Now we've got the main structure of the pile off. You can come in here with your scraper now. Let me get behind it. work with that that drywall is still still solid so we can pull compound over that and make that nice and flat I'll show you how to do that I got one little stubborn piece right here tile your wall needs to be plumb and level okay all right it needs to be level across here and it needs to be plumb if, if it's okay if it leans back but when you get to that corner down there it's got to be plumb in the corner where the two walls come together here this can lean if it's a long flat surface it can lean back a little bit as long as it's flat <clears throat> the problem is come when you come into a corner and you get that 90 degree If this one's leaning back and that one's coming into it And when you go to cut those pieces on this other side, it's gonna you're gonna have to cut them at an angle and it's gonna look bad You can recess them You can recess them behind the uh, See how I struck it? It and loosen the back of it up. If I was to go behind it and hit it, it'll just destroy the drywall. I'm going on the tile like that and fracturing it like that. That seems to be working very well. All 
tighten them out. Let's see if we can. This is back breaking work now. We're working on these back splashes. If you're tall, you might want to sub it out. I wish I wasn't even put this backsplash on there. It didn't look good. I didn't do it right. And it was a pain for me. And it ruined my wall. Tons of work. If you can see that grid pattern, it's still the adhesive. See the knitting pattern? That's that adhesive. Come on. We scrub it. It's got to be scraped. Flush. Now you can see why I say leave the countertops on until after you get done demo and a backsplash. I would go a step further and say do not do not start working on cabinets until you demo the backsplash. The demo on the backsplash should be the first thing to do. Because it's really, really messy. And the tools flying around, legs hitting stuff. Scraper, oscillating multi tool. Clean up a little bit. 
There's my knife. You want to get that little little papers that are hanging? They got to come off there. It just needs to be pretty flat. Oops. All right, now let's clean up a little bit. Big stuff. We get, get the rest of it with the shop light. kitchen receptacles or something like that. Um, you want to turn off possibly your kitchen and dining room receptacles. Sometimes dining room receptacles are tied into the kitchen receptacles. Like this outlet right here is actually part of the dining room receptacles. It has the GFI on it. So when this GFI here pops, it, it's, it, has, it, has, it, it pops the ones in here. So this one outlet here is actually tied to those. So if you don't turn them both off, you might end up with a hot one and might get electrocuted. Um, 
But if you get you a good current tester, you can see if it's got current to it. Um, I've already uninstalled, turned the water supply off. So here's some notes about uninstalling the sink. When you take the sink, when you, when you disconnect all the water lines, turn the shut off valves off, disconnect the water lines, drain the water in the rest of the house, let all the pressure, actually, you know, let's go back. Before you even do that, cut the water off to the house and drain as much water as you can out of those water lines. Just turn them both on and let, let it depressurize, right? Um, and then after that happens, then you come in and disconnect the water lines, right? So what you want, but sometimes these old shutoff valves will leak though. You don't want to turn, have, have to, all this stuff disconnected and then go turn the water back on and find out you got a leak here. I'm telling you, even if it's dripping just a little bit, you'd be amazed at how much water will come out of that thing. Like if you go to bed and go to sleep and wake up, that thing will fill up a 20 gallon bucket overnight, I'm telling you. So, um, 20 gallon drum. So, uh, you need to make sure the shutoff valves are not leaking. If they're old, like more than 10 years old, there's a good chance they might leak a little bit. Um, so, what you want to do is after water are shut off, go out there and turn the water back on and um, have a run a tub upstairs or something, have it open just in case you need, need to turn it off quickly. You don't want to leave a lot of pressure on it. You want the pressure to to escape into the tub up there, right, or in another part of the house. You don't want the water pressure all be here. So open a valve at a shower or something, turn the water on and check these things to see if they're leaking. If they're leaking, turn your water back off, leave that tub running until it runs out of water, and then you're gonna have to go get a cap or you're gonna have to get a new shawl valve. Or you won't have water in your house that night. So um, you need to make sure those shawl valves ain't leaking. All right, we also had a mouse problem here at this house. So um, at some point, a uh, foam was put in here um, to try to keep the mice from climbing up. If there's even a gap like this in between those cabinets, like when these two cabinets come together, that little bitty gap, the mice will put their feet on one side and their back on the other one actually and shimmy up the thing. So um, you gotta make, you gotta, you gotta seal all these things. You should, they, the builder should seal them to keep the mice out, but they don't. So uh, this is your opportunity to go ahead and seal these things to keep mice and other vermin out of your food. Uh, it, they always seem that the, the top parts here are fine, but they'll, if you store food in the bottom cabinets, they will get to that food in them cabinets. They will even scratch it. This is the pest block foam. I found evidence where they just scratched their way at it and, and tried to get in there. Just worked at it all night long. Like they were drilling, uh, drilling, drilling for oil or something. And so um, they must can smell it through the pest and smell the food. I don't know, but um, uh, they didn't have much success getting through this pest block. It's just too much for them. They they they'll chew through drywall and all sorts of stuff. So now is your opportunity to go ahead and seal your cabinets to keep pests out. All right. So and what we're going to do right now. Uh, we're going to remove this countertop now. All right, we've gotten that taken off. And I've remo already mo removed this section here. by them separate and they're usually glued to the drywall back here and they're caught around the top. So step one is cut your caulk lines at the top and the bottom. I mean the top. Sorry. At the top. And we cut the back one too for the main countertop. 
cut it over here. this end piece. Take your stud finder, find your stud there. See? Front stud right there. And mark it. That's where you're going to put your pry bar. In. Don't pry over here where there ain't no stud at. Don't, that's a rookie move. Don't do it. You're going to be fixing drywall for sure. Pry, always, pry on, always pry on the stud when you're removing trim off the wall. Always. All right, let's see here. Let's turn it like this. So this. The black part of this thing is leaving marks all over the place. So when you get to the... All right, there we go. You, just got, you, just want to, you don't want to pry it too much. You'll destroy the drywall. All right. There's a stud here. There's always a stud right there. Back of this thing, see the glue? They put glue on it and they bloop, and they hold it. You put it in there and let the glue sit. Yeah, section of that drywall out. I'm gonna put me a drywall nail in it just so it's held there and then we're gonna comp I'm gonna put I'm gonna show you how to put compound on it. I'm gonna put tape across it and we're gonna put one coat of compound and then we're gonna come back, we're gonna scrape it and then put another coat of compound on it. It'll be nice, it'll be flat, it'll be ready for some mastic or some thin set, whatever. You can put thin set on drywall. But you can't you can't use thin set on painted drywall, but you can use it on raw drywall. Uh, it'll hold. If it can soak that thin set in, it'll hold. I don't recommend it. I mean, there's there's probably better products than that, but it will work. Uh, yeah, whatever this glue crap I use, use that. Well, that stuff was on there. Let me tell you, I can still see some glue there. Okay, let's get the countertop off. Now, with this laminate thing, they have screw this, these cabinets have little plastic dog ears in each corner. And what whoever installed this, they took and just run a screw up through that plastic dog ear in the end of the countertop. And when they couldn't do that, they ran that, they ran their screw, ran their screw up through this plate here. In this case, they just run it right here into, this, into the countertop right there. I can see even some water damage on this countertop. The seal, the seal is starting to break on it. Um, we need a drill. Could have had all this laid out, couldn't I? Oh, that's what I was looking for. Voila, that's what I was looking for. Oscillating, oscillating tool with a scraper blade on it. You can use that to get some of this 
Still a bit of it's still a bit of fault, let's not leave it right now. Alright, drill, drill, drill. Square tube, you use square tube screw. Whatever one there, you screw right up into it here through the bottom. You put one here on this end panel to hold the end here down. regular drywall screws on this end down here. How do I know I've already looked at it? Oh yeah, you got to pull, your, pull all your drawers out. Pull all your drawers out. Your drawers out. You might, if there's like a drawer, a drawer set, you might have to pull the first two drawers out. You might leave the bottom drawer in. But you need to be able to get up in here and get to these screws or whatever they, they use to pull this countertop down and hold it in place while the glue sits. There we go. screw. I might not need me just the right length screw. You don't want it too long where to come up through the new countertop. Maybe he's got the right screw there waiting on me. You don't learn this about me. I have tools laying all over the place. If I if I spend a lot of time farting around with moving tools around, I won't get nothing done. So I bring what tools I need, I just lay them where I can lay them at while I'm working. When I'm done working, I clean them all up. Now, let's see if this thing's gonna come up. Ah, my back. That's not good. As soon as I pull up on that, you know, I feel something on my back here. Awesome. Oh, that's that, that's that foam. Is that foam I put in holding it? I'm, not, I'm gonna try to lift with my with my calves. <clears throat> Man, I worked all day and I didn't have a back back hurt. Oh, I'm getting too old for this shit. I I, I put a piston block back there. And it's, Stop them mice. You'll see when I pull it off. I'm trying to damage my plate here. Maybe. It out in one piece because I might use I'm probably gonna use it for a template to cut the new one. Maybe. Oh, it's screwed into the wall right there. You sucker.
Oh. Maybe something's covered up by this foam. Something burnt right there. Huh? Let's see if we can like slide it out. We'll prize it up, pry out on it. For a template, but it's not going to cooperate, is it? Oh, shit! Just my freaking corner beam just come off there. always a stud on one side of these out reefs in out of that there's almost always a stud um, in this kitchen there's a couple that are, are cut in boxes which means they just cut out for the box and use like little dog ears to hold them in place but the vast majority of the time they're going to be nailed in there's a stud right here Missing a screw somewhere. It should come out. There's a screw missing. And I put foam in it. I can't see. I can't see where my. If I, had, if I didn't have this plate in here, I could just pry up on it, but that plate's making it a... I think I'm going to have to break it to get it out of here. Wow, that's that foam. Holy moly. That foam, I think that foam holding it in. I believe it was that phone. That phone was holding that thing in. I believe your mice, well your mice were coming up right in this little crack, right that little separation that cabinet there. I think they were coming out up under here, 
on the dishwasher. They dug out under the drywall there. And they were coming, they were coming, getting in this cabin here somehow. I think they were climbing up that, that uh, dishwasher drain line. Either that or they were coming in here. I still believe they were getting up here somehow because we were getting pests, evidence of, of mice in this top drawer on this side. If you look at how it's made here, it's like, how did they get in here? Mice get where they can get and they don't get where they can't get. Does that make any sense? It should. Basically, it means if a mice can get, if there's a way, any possible way that a mouse can get in there, it's going to get in there. If there's no way for it to get in there, it ain't going to get in there. That's why you never see cat, you never see mice up in these upper cabinets, All right? At least I, at least I've never seen them up there. Lower cabinets though, they, they were the drywall when they installed this. So here's the problem when they installed this drywall in here. And, and, and the rest of the house, it gets trim at the bottom. And that trim goes down flush and gets caught and nailed in and painted. Right? But here, they don't, in the kitchen behind the cabinets, they don't do that. They just put the cabinets in there. So there's that gap underneath the sheetrock. And if that gap is too high, where you got your bottom, bottom stud plate, and sometimes the sheetrock is only coming down like right to it, if it, there might even be a gap there, depending on how they hung the sheetrock in. But um, so that's where they come in. They come in behind that, that that stud wall because it ain't sealed at the bottom. So if you're building a house or something, building a house for yourself or something, ask them to seal them cabinets. I'm gonna get we gotta put a new countertop down flush on this. So this. This has got to be nice and clean here on the top. Nice and clean and level. Wow, that thing is so flimsy. Look, you can break that easy if you're careful. Hmm, that's sticking up a little bit. This is the level, so I'm going to cut it right off there. There you go, just like that. All right, break the bond at the back. This is a good way to do it. Break the bond. See that caulk, you know, caulk line, old caulk line, you can get that off. You scrape, scrape like this back towards it like this. Don't scrape like that. You'll mess up the paint. Scrape back towards the crap. Crappy section here. Hang on. 
obvious. We'll repaint this section here until you just drive off. Then you come on this side here where it's caught here. And get that off. Gotta get all that old caulk off and scrape it off. Unless you want to spend, take your, spend your time being anyway, anywhere, that's for sure. Now, when you pull that trim off, there's going to be a lot of nails sticking out. Good no, I'm not going to do that. Let's go along here. So, this, this whole, the whole top section here has got to be flush. So we're going to take our, this will work. size gap where they can put their feet on one side and their back against, back against the other just like someone climbing up and, just like a rock climber going up a chase a chimney chimney climbing all right before we start cleaning let's see if we can get any this extra adhesive off If it's 
peel them like that and just cut, cut a little bit back from where it stops at. Right, that, and that'll come right off. See? You want to get most of that paper crap off there, though. So you want to put your compound on it, it'll stick out. Mostly you want it just to be flat. Compound compound is going to make up for a lot of the imperfections. Huh. Look at that. This sucker. Put some pieces up there, raise that up so it'll sit on top of that counter, on top of that uh, countertop backsplash. Pull these nails off with a, with a, with a claw or, or pliers, but or you can just beat them in. Oh, there's a hole down there. I don't 
to John Brown. You little bastards. tedious part. Just like that. We'll take the we'll set or mask or whatever. We need to do. Okay. Giving me big pieces of drywall paper that's hanging off. All right, now we're gonna we're gonna put sheetrock tape over whatever stuff is uh has got a big uh 
big hole in it like this here. So I just got this hole down here. We're going to take a drywall tape. It's a mesh like this. This is the cheaper one. It's really thin. I recommend the brown one. It's like this wide. It's like a, a brown tannish color. Um, it works way better. You can, you can fix just about any hole with that. And it sticks better too. This shit ain't still working. Like you rag. You know what? Let me vacuum it first. I think this got. I think that dust is getting on it, and not letting it stick. Let me vacuum it anyway.
leaves some of that dry all over there, but it can't be, it needs to be flush is the most important part. Be a plate or somewhere. You see how bad this looks, right? piece of tape just a little Normally I would put a put that tape in it at a, a fold at a 90 degree angle, put it in there. But you want to make sure this corner here is level. Take your level, put your level in there. You shouldn't you should get something that's roughly level here, and then go on this side. And it's pretty level there too. So this one's good to go. Hole there. Let's put something across that hole. There we go. Let's just go across the whole thing. There we go. That'll just help us help us a little bit. We could probably we're going to put two coats on it anyway, and this is not going to be finish finish grade. It just needs to be flat and no holes. It just needs to be able to set thin set or whatever it's on there. It's not going to be, it's just holding it against the wall, like as if I'm standing here, the wall, how much, how much weight is the wall holding if I'm leaning against the wall versus the ground, right? That's what we're going for. You want to be real careful with your corner bead. If 
if you mess around with this too much, you might make it start cracking on this outside. And then you'll have a right mess with these. You can either go straight through the corner bead or, or go beside the corner bead into the sheet rod. You just want to pin the corner bead down. Let's see if we can. I'm going to show you the quick way to do this. Now, if you're a real go-getter, you can go on here and and measure up about where that old backsplash was at and cut you a line all the way across there with um, Where is the oscillating motor? Oh, here it is. Isolate multi tool. Don't use a scraper blade. Get you like a wood cutting blade, multi purpose blade, but it'll cut through just like butter. Just go on there and cut it like that. See, so you drew that line, take you a level and go across there. Take you a laser level and shoot your laser level across there and cut it. That's what I would do. And then you want to go up here. In this case, you don't need to cut all the way up here where the cabinet's at. You can cut right where the old backsplash was at, right? And just cut along there, cut the whole piece out. Now, I'm not doing that because you'd have to fix, you might have to end up having to fix the corner bead. I mean, it's just a nightmare. I'm going to show you the easy way to do it is I'm just going to plaster right over that. And that's why I put so much effort into, into trying to get this flat and get this excess paper off. Because we're going to just take drywall compound and, and, um, and, 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 and plaster right over that nice and flat. Feel this thing up. All right, now, now we're not too often concerned about this. We're going to overlap this a little bit here, but the main part is here. Oh, uh, we got to tape over these. We got to tape over these, out, these switches.
Oh yeah, I've turned off the dishwasher. There's a dishwasher circuit, garbage disposal circuit, and then the out circuit. So there's a, there's a um, I mean, the, and the oven circuit over there too. So there's like four breakers you need to turn off before you start renovating your kitchen. These are all really taped over. Hope I can do this before we run out of time on our on our video. Let's see here. All right, let me get us something to kneel on here. Can you get as old as me? Don't mess around. Like I said, when you go to put your now your your thin set and all that's gonna be a goo like this too. So and we're gonna put two coats of this on here, and then we're gonna put the thin set goo on it. So it ain't got to be perfect, okay? It ain't got don't go around there and sand it, just scrape it. This is so small I gotta use a hand a six inch knife. painted these walls but it's gonna look like I'm gonna have to touch up around I guess I'm gonna have to touch up around there So your 10 inch knife, if your 10 inch foot won't fit. Which is pretty normal for corner bead to have that gap. This is not precise work here.
I've got an 18 inch spatula, but honestly, it's a little too. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. It's a little hard to use it, to be honest, in here. surface is stuck so well if it don't give me a good feel. I have to wait till I, I'll have to use this one on my uh, second go around. I'm going to try to make it really flat. We'll just use the 12 for now. I'm going to start problem with that. I might try using that 10. Yep, there we go. I don't know why it's easy. I might have to do something there. Let's do this one. Oops, let me uh, get any excess up here. I missed a hole up there, right there. Using that 10 is not working out for me to spread it on. There we go. A little more dexterous. A little more dexterity to it. I would, I would put this tape at a 90 degree angle on the corner and tape it, but in this case, it's all going to get tied over there. So it's not really the point of what I'm doing here. Okay, I need to make it nice and flat. And usually a knife has a bow to it. For right now, I want to have my bow towards the wall.
Now we're just going to come along and scrape this. What you want to, you want to get most of it flat from out. Right now, I'm gonna have to pull this with a I'll pull this with that big knife. See if we can pull this with this six inch knife. At least to here. And then use the big knife. I'm going to just try and get it on the wall right now. And I'll smooth it out. Oh. Fill in some of these gangsta holes. Gangsta paradise in here. And then gangsta paradise. compound on your cabinets just let it dry and pick it off with your finger pick it off with your finger and then uh, and then wipe it with a wet rag yeah I got a 12 inch pan but I hadn't I planned on using the reason why I'm using the tin uh, is because it's easier to handle. And I thought I was gonna be using that trowel. Which you might call this a trowel, but it's not it's a sheetrock knife. But man, I'm telling you, there's a lot you can do with a 12 inch sheetrock knife. It comes spreading stuff out. A lot more than a six inch knife.
that's mostly it there. Yep. I really need to put some compound in here. I need to put a piece of wood or something in there and nail it down. kind of straight in here. Ow! Right in my friggin' nose, man. Problem is, is just this corner bead. Oh God, I'm making such a mess here. Yes, just like that. Yes. When they put that corner bead in, there's uh, it's, it takes the wall out of square. It's got to right. It's got to build up on each side. Corn beads there. It ends up taking a wall, the wall square before that, and it's not square after. Why you lot of, see a lot of assemblies involving corners end up fighting with it, cutting the trim around in corners. If it's a finished drywall wall. Alright, there you go. Now, let this dry 24 hours, come back and put another coat on it. Um, scrape it before you put the second coat on it, but you want to pull a thin coat the second time. It's just got to be flat. Go along here, make sure there's no low or weird spots or anything that's terrible out of play. You could take a long, you could take something like that. You could take this 18 inch trowel. Or you can just pull the trial like that across there with that final coat, which is probably what I'm going to do. Because I'm going to put the compound on there and I'm going to pull it across with this for the final one. Scrape it first and then do that. And I'll do that all the way around and it should give us a nice base for putting our backsplash on.